Thank you, Melek. So I'll speak today about video games. Computer and video games are becoming the most dominant media form of the 21st century. And I'm going to cite here Stan Lee in Spider-Man saying, with great power comes great responsibility. If we have such power, if we are becoming so dominant, we have to think about how we use our media and how we can use this media to create social change. As game makers, we are used to get a lot of criticism. Public figures, parents tell us that what we're doing is shallow, violent, waste of time, some cases even really causing damage to kids. Famous uh, film critic Roger Ebert, in what became a very big uh, internet uh, debate, says that no matter how hard we try, and no matter how our technology is going to become better and better, we're never going to reach the level of meaning and art that films do. Same time, we are massive. We are a $60 billion industry that is just getting bigger. In some countries, in many countries, we surpassed movie ticket sales. Another thing that we have is another superpower is the power of engagement. This is something that even if you're not a gamer, if you'd never play games, just watching people play games, you get it. This power of engagement is what drives 85 million people to raise virtual chickens and tend to their virtual farms on Farmville and come back every day for more. This type of continuous engagement is something that we didn't see in traditional media. And we're also winning the competition on time, which is, as you all know, is the most important competition for media. 407 million hours a month, according to Nielsen, is what people pr spend playing online games. For the first time in history, this is more than they spend on email. So what does it mean to all of us? You know, I'm throwing at you those stats and, and, uh, and figures. In a very tangible way, it means that Amalia, who is my baby daughter, she's 16 months old, in her lifetime, she's going to be influenced by di digital games more than any other media. And here I come to the part of the responsibility. Games for Change is the organization I'm running with Michelle Bird. This organization has one mission to use this extraordinary power for social good. How can we use the same games, the same tools, the same technologies to deal with the most pressing issues of our day, social and political? We're a community of collaboration, sharing knowledge, resources, incubating projects, helping people create more of those games and higher quality of those games. It's not a new idea. If you think about it, we have it for tens and, and even more than a hundred of years. We're talking about Charles Dickens, who wrote super compelling books that be, became hugely successful about the most pressing issues of his day. Poverty, war, conflict. Another one is Hart, Art Spiegelman. Comic books, as you all know, suffered from the same criticism. Shallow, violent, waste of time. In 92, he told, through a comic book, the most profound story that he could tell. The story of his father in World War II, and it became a Pulitzer Prize winner, a bestseller, and it changed the comic book media forever. Since then, people are talking about graphic novels, and many followed his way. The, the team behind Inconvenient Truth, and we see it with documentaries for many years, but think about what they did. They took a PowerPoint presentation, much like the one I'm giving you today, and turned it into the topic of discussion for millions of people, the hottest topic. So, how do we do it with video games? What I want to introduce you today to are the pioneers, the community heroes of Games for Change, of social impact games. One of them is Sandra Day O'Connor. You can suspect Sandra Day O'Connor, Supreme Court Justice, to be a gamer. She's 82 years old. She retired two years ago from the Supreme Court and her first mission was to tackle civic education. She went to kids and she asked them a simple question. What are the three branches of government? Guess what? Nobody knew. But when she asked them who are the three judges of American Idol, they all knew. So she realized something very profound that if she uses popular media, she might reach those kids and engage them. 
Since then, with a team of uh, creators and, and uh, people that have expertise in non-profit, she created icivics.com. If you go to that site, you can play games about the executive branch, the legislative process, and the court system. Another hero is Susanna Ruiz. A student in, as a student in the University of Southern California a few years ago, she created a groundbreaking game called Our Four is Dying. It's not your 3D immersive game, but it did two amazing things. One is, it puts you in the shoes of a refugee in Sudan, and you can actually experience that perspective through the game. And she also mobilized 50,000 people to send letters to the president and Congress after playing this game. Jane McGonigal is another one of those heroes. A world without oil two years ago, she created an experience, an event. For two months, people lived a nightmare scenario that the world is running out of oil. They shared their stories, diaries, poems, all in the same environment that is actually a science fiction environment, just to understand it better and be prepared when it actually happens. I'm going to share uh, towards the end my personal perspective. I was lucky to be part of a similar project called Peacemaker. Six years ago, I came to the US to Carnegie Mellon, and with a team of students, we created a game in which, rather than wage war, you can actually win peace between the two sides. You can play the Israeli side or the Palestinian side, and you can reach an agreement at the end. We later commercialized it, and it was selling in over 60 countries. What I want to leave with you today is that if we, as a team of students, were able to do it, anyone can. So whether you're a policymaker, a game maker, a filmmaker, an academic, someone who can invest or fund those kind of games, we need you guys. It's the media of the future. The time is now. Join this movement. Thank you very much.